in this type of competitive environment where homes go quickly, maybe make an offer contingent on finding insurance. So that's usually what I've advised my clients to do uh, in this day and age is go ahead and make the offer that you'd like on the house that you're looking at. But make sure that you have an insurance contingency in there so that the seller knows that, you know, if you if you were expecting insurance to be five thousand dollars a year and the quotes came back, let's say at twenty thousand, you know, most homeowners or, you know, uh, eventual homeowners are not going to want to foot that bill. So then you would, of course, withdraw your offer. When I'm feeding down, I can't win for a strong Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another exciting episode of Job with Jim. My name is Jim Meyer, broker associate at Remax Gold. Now you have a friend in the real estate business. I've got my good buddy Jim T. Chong, the walk star. Now you have a friend in the publicity business. We've got Jim Felipe Esquire. Now you have a friend in the attorney business. I've sent him a lot of business. None of those people have gone to jail. And we've got Greg Zaman, who is an insurance agent extraordinaire. Thank you so much, Greg, for stopping by. Uh, let me ask you a question. If I'm trying to buy a house right now, should I just wait to the last minute to try to get the insurance? Or should I talk to you right before I make the offer? Once I get into escrow, what what do I do today in today's crazy market? It's a great question, and it's never been more uh, appropriate than now. So there's two things that I usually recommend uh, clients to do. One is you can either, as you said, get a bid up front or ask for an insurance estimate for a house or a condo or what have you that you're looking to purchase. Or another way to do it, especially in this type of competitive environment where homes go quickly, maybe make an offer contingent on finding insurance. So that's usually what I've advised my clients to do uh, in this day and age is go ahead and make the offer that you'd like on the house that you're looking at, but make sure that you have an insurance contingency in there so that the seller knows that you know, if you if you were expecting insurance to be five thousand dollars a year and the quotes came back, let's say at twenty thousand, you know, most homeowners or you know, uh, eventual homeowners are not going to want to foot that bill. So then you would, of course, withdraw your offer. So nowadays, especially in certain fire zones, just to to understand the rates and the premiums, I've advised clients to make that offer contingent upon finding uh, an appropriately priced insurance policy. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Uh... Jim Felipe, do you have a follow-up question? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it, obviously it's going to be a, based on each house, you know, the cost of insurance. Is there any way to get an idea of what that cost is going to be based on the type of house I'm looking for? Not, not exactly. And the other reason for that, Jim, is... You, um, you know, if you're buying an existing house, there may be other factors that are outside of your control. For example, maybe uh, the house you're looking at had one or two water losses in the last three to five years. That's going to come up on the insurance reports when seeking quotes. And there's going to be carriers that will decline the risk, not because you did anything wrong, but because that house that you're looking at purchasing may have an adverse claim history. So there's no one size fits all per se on it. Um, you know, I would say generally speaking, newer builds uh, in you know track home communities more predictable there just because of similar plot sizes. Those houses will all have fire sprinklers, GFI outlets, and all of that. So I would say newer track homes in California are going to inherently pay less for insurance, but there's no uh, cookie cutter way to say you know this house is seventeen hundred dollars a year. This one is is twenty eight. There's a, a little bit of individualized uh, underwriting that goes on based on location and based on, like I said, a potential claims history with the house. Roof type is another factor. You know, if it's a wood shake roof, a lot of insurance companies will not underwrite risk like that. So it's more individualized, I would say, than maybe it used to be in the past. Yeah. Makes Mr. Sense. Chong, do you have a follow up to the follow up? No, I think um, I think I'm good. I think the only question I have is what's in your house? Okay, well, you know what? I've been talking about my coffee all week. I'm going to let it go for a minute. Jim T. Chung, what are you drinking? I am at a place called Panera Bread. 
Uh -huh. And so I'm drinking actually coffee. They're dark, dark roast because that's the best way. They charge only like $12, $13 a month. And I get unlimited coffee in the mornings, unlimited soda, unlimited tea. And so is that incredible for $12 a month for the whole month? That's pretty good. That's well, why I'm here coffee. every day. I get uh, I a lot of people don't know about death wish coffee, but that that keeps me awake for two. <laughs> and I'm drinking it out of the uh, the coffee mug that Brenda gave me from Fidelity Title. Jim Felipe, are you drinking anything? You know, I'm boring. I'm always drinking water. So no coffee for me with uh, a chase of vodka. Uh, Greg, <laughs> this is gonna be the last episode of the week. Uh, did you have a good time this week? Good week. Yeah, this, is, this was great, uh, Jim. Thanks so much for uh, for the invite, and you know, like I said, happy to discuss this, uh, you know, with you and your viewers. And um, yeah, really happy to be a, re a resource and and help out, it, you know, if need be. Like I said, it's a it's a challenging market uh, with the insurance situation right now, and so I do I'd say feel fortunate that you know, being like I said, an independent broker, I have access to a lot of insurance companies that are still writing in California. And so um, I'm still able to help clients that are going through major uprates and non-renewals and uh, this turbulent market and help them, you know, navigate it as best we can. And in case anyone was not here for the episode, when I mentioned it, you got me insurance. It's, it's more expensive than the insurance that just left us, but that's, that's called life. We had one insurance, uh, person that said we had to give them our car insurance. And I said, well, when we bundle it, does that mean the home insurance is going to be cheaper or the whole package will be cheaper? Oh, I don't think so. And um, then we also had Geico say, well, uh, call us in six months. We might be able to help you. Uh, well, our insurance is being canceled in two months. So, uh, but Greg, uh, we're going to sign our contract tomorrow, right? To start in two months. And that's right. Um, we're excited about that. So um, I'm looking to, no, I'm not going to say this. I'm looking forward to my house burning down. <laughs> That's a terrible thing. I'll, edit that I'll, out. I'll, I'll be there to help you with the claim if the need arises, but uh, it's fine with me, Jim, if you just pay your premiums and don't file uh, any fire claims. Okay. Uh, yeah. I never <laughs> my bills. Okay. So uh, Greg, what are you drinking? Uh, I'm going to join Felipe on this one. Um, I always, oh, excuse me. Uh, I always have a cup of water on my desk. I'm on the phone for a living. It's an occupational hazard. So I do drink a fair amount of uh, of water during the workday. Okay. And can somebody call you for a quote? Is it better to email than that, you? Either either one is fine. Uh, they can call me directly for a quote. If they, uh, I have a few receptionists. If they get my receptionist desk, simply ask for Greg uh, and I'm happy to help. Or as you know, Jim, you can, you know, send me a, a contact email and uh, happy to schedule a time and, and discuss insurance options with anybody that uh, is in need. And real quick question. Is it a waste of time for somebody to send you an, e an email about a specific address? I mean, does it take you too much time to figure stuff out until the, after they get in the contract? Great question. Uh, not to be um, insensitive, to, insensitive, but you know, due to the due to the volume uh, of work uh, on myself and my staff, I do uh, request that clients be formally in contract before asking for quotes. So I generally will tell them to submit an offer contingent on them, you know, finding a, a, an appropriate insurance policy, and then once that's been submitted. I can usually have them a quote within about 24 to 48 business hours. Uh, so they'll know shortly. But um, yeah, I, I would say at this time, client in contract, even if it's contingent on insurance, is best before we start, uh, you know, marketing and doing the shopping. Okay, beautiful. Okay, last question. Me as a listing agent, if I gave you like addresses of my listings um, and then try to sell you to the buyers, even if they're represented by another person, um, is that a smart thing? Yes, uh, we we can help with that. Um, so yeah, that's going to be the case, and you need to get an idea. You know, I I did have an and to tell an anecdote. I had a client in Lafayette uh, here in the East Bay that uh, the uh, the seller's agent actually introduced me to the buyer's agent and said, can you get my client out of a pickle? They're closing in 48 hours. And uh, it was a tight window, but we were able to to make it happen for him. So uh, sometimes, Jim, the seller's agent uh, can help me uh, get introduced to the, to the buyer's agent and hence the buyer. So yes, if you have any properties or anything that 
Uh, like I said, the other side of the table is is asking for help or what have you. Happy to be a resource uh, if, if it comes up. Yeah, I'm doing an open house Sunday, so we expect some phone calls on Monday. Um, okay, uh, Jim, do you have any, Jim uh, Chong, do you have a final final of, for the week? No, I think it's a very important topic. People uh, usually don't think about it till it becomes important or it's mandatory. It's great that people have mandatory insurance on property because if you lose it, you'll understand the value of what's there. Thank you so much, Brave. I tell you're a true professional. And Jim and Jim, always great looking at how we can do with Java with the gyms. Philippe, you have a Absolutely. final, final, final for the week. Another great week. Uh, appreciate the uh, opportunity to have Greg here and teach us about what's going on in the insurance business. It is crazy out there. So if you have insurance issues, definitely get on it sooner rather than later because it's not something you want to wait till the last minute. All right. We're going to see you guys again next time for another exciting episode of Java with the Gyms. See ya.